blonde-eyed, long-haired Jesus, or bald, black, tall Jesus. Tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, this ain't a black or white thing. Come on, come on. Tell, tell, the, tell, the, tell, the, tell your other neighbor, tell your other neighbor, this is a Jesus thing. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Jesus came to be salvation for black people and white people. For brown people and for pink people. He came to be salvation for the rich and the poor. For the young and the old. His blood was shed for all. Everybody say all. Hey, all. True, 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 true. I know we got thinkers in this house. True. True, we may not have any photographs of Jesus. We, may, we, we Actually, we don't have any photographs of Jesus. Good or bad. But that doesn't mean we don't have any pictures for you to now start coming up with your own picture. Thank God for the book of Revelation. Because right away, the book begins with a more perfect picture of Christ. That I think when we begin to hear this morning, we're all going to stand back and go, Eh, hey, wait a minute, this ain't the Jesus of the Sunday school that I've known. No. What does he really look like? Act like? Talk like? Walk like? That's why this dramatic book is called the unveiling, the revelation of Jesus the Christ. You want to see Jesus as never seen before? Oh, this message will bless you this morning. Look at verse 14. Verse 14. Chapter 1, verse 14. His head, we want to see some description now. His head and his hair is white like wool. That speaks of purity and dignity. His eyes, verse 14, is like x-ray. That tells me there's nothing Absolutely nothing he cannot see through. <laughs> Come on now. If you think, if you think Jesus doesn't see everything people do to you, if you think Jesus doesn't hear everything people say about you, then you don't know Jesus. Because this Jesus is he's got bionic powers. That's why I don't worry what people say about me or what people do to me. Whatever. Whatever. His feet, his feet, verse 15, is like burnished bronze. You know what that means, don't you? That's, that means he's got strong legs. He's got strong. <laughs> David, uh, David, I was, you're, you're one of my boys. I wasn't going to make you showcase. I was going to make David come up and, and just show, show strong legs. And, and, even, and even his legs are still puny compared to these bronze legs. No, no, my, 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 you don't want to see my legs. My leg is a stick. But, but, no, no, you don't want to see my leg. You don't want to see my leg. He said if his legs are like Bronze, British bronze. That means he's got strong legs and he's stable. <laughs> Keep reading. I'm taking you somewhere this morning. Jesus, as you've never seen before, his voice, verse 15, is like Niagara Falls. 
Have you ever tried to talk to someone when you're, while you're close to the Niagara Falls? What, what do you say? I can't hear you. What do you say? That's because his voice of authority. If you can hear what the Spirit has to say to the church, his voice of authority stands out above all other voices. Like the voice of Niagara Falls. Oh, his right hands. Daniel, I was going to make you show them your bicep. <laughs> because he's, he's, been, he's been lifting weight. This boy's been lifting weight and he's only 12 years old. Somebody help me. Daniel, you want to come, 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 son. Come, get on the camera. Come get on the camera. Let's give him a hand. This is, this, this is not even on, in my notes. This is not in my notes. Since I'm in a row, Daniel, come on, flex. Come on, take, 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 take. Come on, come on. Flex, flex for them. Flex for them. Did you see that? Did you see that? No, no kidding. That's my boy. That's my boy. That's my boy. I, I, gotta, show, I gotta show that off, man. I gotta show that off. No, you don't want to see my. <laughs> no, please, you don't want to. You'll be, I'll be embarrassed. Verse 16. His right hand. He said in his right hands, he holds, he holds the seven stars, which the Bible tells us the seven stars are the seven churches. The seven angels of the churches. Maybe next week I'll tell you who those angels are. But, but come on now. If he can hold the world in his hands, and the church too. What does that tell you about this Jesus? Verse 16. And out of his mouth. His mouth. When he speaks. Demons tremble. <laughs> When he speaks, witches take over. When he speaks, mountains become flat. When he speaks, valleys are filled up. Oh, you're not hearing me this morning. You're not here. Perhaps the most intriguing, intriguing, the most intriguing picture and description of Jesus that John is shown in this first chapter is the two descriptions that I want you to see this morning. So are you ready, church? Are you ready to get blessed more? Amen. Number one. Number one. Jesus as your first and your last. Let that sink in. Jesus as your first and your last. Five times in chapter one, five times in chapter one, I counted it with my own hands, my own eyes. Jesus says, I am the first and the last. I am the first and the last. Let's look at it. Verse four. Verse four. From him who is and who was and who is to come verse 5 the firstborn of the dead firstborn of the dead meaning Lazarus was raised the widow's son of Nain was raised Jairus' daughter was raised Dorcas was raised Eutychus, you remember that guy, Eutychus, that little guy in the book of Acts? Paul was preaching and he said, Paul has been preaching all day long. And this boy was sitting by the window uh, upstairs and he fell and died. And he was raped. But they all died again. But Jesus... 
is the firstborn of the dead. Brother Roy, meaning, because he is the only one who has resurrected from the dead to never die again. So guess what? Guess what? If he is first, that means there's going to be a second. <laughs> and there's going to be a third. <laughs> and there's going to be a fourth. <laughs> and there's going to be a thousand. <laughs> so, so you pick your number in the line. Hey! Because he lives. I say because he lives. I too shall live again. He is the first from the dead. Verse 8. The Alpha and the Omega. Who is and who was and who is to come. Alpha and Omega are not the names of your children. Alpha and Omega are the first and last letters in the Greek alphabet. It signifies the beginning and the end. The first and the last. That's why you don't need to worry about what you're worrying about. Let me say it again. That's why you don't need to worry about what is troubling you and worrying you now. Because Hey! The Bible says to tell you if he started it, he will finish it because he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I don't know what is started in your life in 2012, but I got a message for you. You'll finish it. You, you remember the, last, the, the message last week? The point was for those who, of you who are in an uncompleted project. When we looked at God is shaking things up for an overflow. The book of Agai. It's for those who are in the season of an uncompleted project in your life. Go read it. If you, if you have something that has been laying down for a long time and you can't seem to get a handle on it and, 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 and you know it's a vision that God has given to you, the book of Agia is for you this year. Amen. Because he said, if he started it, he'll finish it. And this morning we're coming back to the book of Revelation, the last book, to say he started it, he'll finish it. But don't miss this. Is also all the letters in between too. Again, again, verse 17. I am the first and the last. Five times. Do you see how exclusive that is? Five times he repeats the same thing in one chapter so you don't miss it. Come on, be real. Come on, be real. Ain't nobody else can make such a claim. Ain't nobody else. Nobody else is first. They may think they are, and nobody else is last. If the person sitting next to you right now think they're first, you know how, because they think they're the center of the universe. <laughs> don't, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. If they think they're first, then Jesus being the first, still makes him the first first. <laughs> put it however, however you want to put it. He's still going to be the first, 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 first. Oh, to a million, a trillion times. And my brothers and my sisters, first is very important. Why he said it five times? First is very important. It's like this, it's like this. I have five kids. When our kids were little, uh, they're, all growing, they're all growing big now, aren't, you? aren't they? Okay, when they were little. Uh, you, all remember how, you all remember how little they were? 
You all remember how little they were when we first came here? Put the second one on. You all remember how little they were when we first came here? And uh, when, when, when they were that little, when they were that little, when they were that little, in our family devotions, we had tons of fun when we, when we gathered together for our family, tons of fun. Uh, every lesson, every lesson we teach them had an activity to reinforce the lesson. Like one lesson I remember very much is they will cut a pumpkin. They will cut up a pumpkin and scrape the inside of that pumpkin and take out all the hooey gooey stuff. And you can see there you go, ew, ew, ew. And, and, and the reason why we, is, is that is because there's a lesson to that. Like inside us, like the pumpkin, uh, it, it's, it's full of gooks. And, and, and when you clean it out, Jesus comes and clean it out. And then when you put, when you put a, a, a light, a, a little candle into that jack-o'-lantern, and, and, and you see the inside now turns brighter. And, and that's what Jesus does when he comes into our life. And, and, and his light shines through our hearts and into the world to see. So there's always these activities that we will do with them. Or there was another one where uh, we, 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 we will tell them to train our goldfish. We'll tell them to train our goldfish a new trick. <laughs> and a new trick like jump out of the water or something. And, or, or just do a flip, flip, do a somersault, do a flip. You know, what do you call the flip thing? Uh, back flip. And, and you should see these little kids then. Oh, put it in the shop. They're so, gull- they're so, they're so innocent. And, 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 and they, they, will try, they will try to talk to the fish. Flip. And they'll be going hours. Flesh. I, I'll go. I'll, I'll go. What, what is the matter? The fish is not listening to you. Come on. Talk to him. On. Talk to him. On. And flip. And, 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 and the fish won't be doing nothing. But the point of the lesson is this. That the only way they could communicate to that fish is they got to become like that fish. In the same way, in the same way, the only way God could communicate to us is he had to become like us. Hence, God became a man. So, 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 So we had lots of fun things during our family devotion. Remember Naomi and Adam? Daniel, you remember? And, and, but Mary and I will go. Mary and I will go. Mary and I will say to them, hey, who wants to go first? Who wants to do the activity first? And all the eight hands will go up. <laughs> Adam will go, dad, me, me. Naomi will go, no, me first. My turn. And Daniel wouldn't give up. He would go, not fair. <laughs> Not fair. And Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah is sitting in the corner, pouting like a cat. <laughs> yeah, like you just get our attention. Why? Why? Because they all want to go first. Naomi asked one time, as, uh, he said, Dad, as we get older in life, does it automatically happen 